Bum, 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 bum. Hi, I'm Jason. Today is Pentecost. It's a day that is celebrated all around the world among followers of Christ. And it is often mistakenly thought of as a holiday that was invented a couple thousand years ago, shortly after Jesus died, resurrected, ascended, and sent the Spirit of God. But Pentecost is a holiday that actually goes back thousands of years even before the time of Jesus of Nazareth. Pentecost started at Mount Sinai when the Israelites were set free from slavery and wandering in the wilderness. But I want to go back even before that. You remember the story of the Tower of Babel? The people had united and they had a common language, so they built this tower. And they thought they could build it up to the heavens. Well, then they were separated. When we speak a different language from one another, when we have different vocabulary from one another, we are so easily divided, aren't we? So what you have early on in the story of humanity is a story of division based on separate languages, division based on being different from one another. And so what you see at Mount Sinai is something interesting, even though it was the Israelites that were in the wilderness and they come to this mountain, they have a common experience together that they believed the whole world heard. So this is the moment where Moses goes on the mountain and the Israelites are at the base of the mountain and they hear the voice of God. Quite possibly the first time in human history that humans together as a group heard God's voice. There are instances in scripture where individuals heard the voice of God or maybe more than one person heard the voice of God. But this is an entire Israelite community that heard the voice of God. This is the giving of the words, the giving of the what sometimes is called the Ten Commands, the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words, when God spoke from the mountain. And remember, this was terrifying to many of them. It was terrifying to hear this audible voice of God. And God spoke from the mountain. And there was thunder and there was lightning and th it, there was smoke and there was fear and there was terror and excitement and the, the Lord descended on the mountain as fire. That's the holiday called Pentecost, the original Pentecost. In the Greek, it is uh, Pentecost is count 50, so 50 days after they were set free from slavery at Passover. In the Hebrew, the word is Shavuot, which means weeks. It's seven weeks plus a day. There's this seven times, seven days in a week plus a day. There's something about the fullness and wholeness of that after being set free from slavery, wandering for seven and seven and then another. On this new day, after the seven, seven is this feast of weeks, this festival, this moment where God spoke in the midst of the wild place, in the midst of a place where it was believed in the ancient Near Eastern culture that there were no gods. There were no gods in the wild places. There were no gods in the desert. There were no gods in the middle of the different kind of kingdoms. And so the original Pentecost is associated with the words of God. When God spoke words to humanity. Now in the scriptures it says that it was spoken to the Israelites, but in oral culture and the tradition of Judaism. So I don't know if this happened or not, but it is believed that when God spoke from the mountain and the Israelites were, the Israelites were at the base of the mountain, it, it is believed in oral tradition that the entire world heard the voice of God. I don't know whether that happened, but here's a question. If that, if that did happen, if the entire wor world heard the voice and the words of God, what language did they hear it in? So you have all of humanity united in one language at the beginning of our collective story, and then you have a separation uh, at Babel of different languages and, and a spreading out and in many ways a divide. And then you have this, this moment at Mount Sinai in the wild place in the wilderness where the voice of God is spoken and possibly heard among all the people and all the language of, languages of the world now fast forward a bit to a prophet, a prophecy in the book of Joel. In this prophecy, God speaks through Joel and says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. What an amazing hope. What a beautiful hope that God's spirit would be poured out on every single human being. And so what you have is 
a hope, a, a prophecy from God that leads to a hope that God would not just speak his words to all of humanity, but that God would give his very self and his spirit would be given to humanity from word to spirit. Not just words, but the essence of those words. Not just the words themselves, not just a vocabulary, but a deep, full understanding of those words. Not just the words that speak the truth, but the truth itself embedded in humans, right? Because words carry ideas, but they are not the ideas themselves. Words actually have limitations to them based on the hearer's understanding of them. Words have limitations to them because it is based on whether the listener understands the deep meaning of those words. But when it goes beyond words and goes into spirit, there's, there's something that's more of the, on the inside. There's something that's invisible that is understood. Now, fast forward to the book of Acts at the time of Pentecost that is oftentimes thought of as the original Pentecost, but the original Pentecost goes back again to Exodus 19 and 20 when God spoke at Mount Sinai. And so the earliest followers of Jesus celebrated Pentecost, not because they were followers of Jesus, but because they were Jewish and they were celebrating a festival, a feast, a holiday that their families had celebrated and their ancestors had celebrated and they were keeping a tradition even though they were believers in Jesus, even though they were witnesses to the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, they also maintained their tradition of remembering, collectively remembering when God spoke on the mountain and this hope that God would give his spirit as well as his words. And in this moment, at this holiday called Pentecost, that they were observing together, there were Jewish sisters and brothers from around the world because they had been separated. They had moved out of Jerusalem. They had moved out of the nation of Israel altogether and lived in all sorts of places around the ancient Near East. And they came back together for this holiday. They didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know there would be this this miraculous moment in the book of, that's recorded in the book of Acts. They came together in Jerusalem because they were doing a pilgrimage back to Jerusalem for Pentecost. And so what that means is that there were Jewish sisters and brothers from around the world that came together for a holiday, but those sisters and brothers, they didn't all speak the same language. And so they're remembering this moment when God spoke his words and when it was believed in tradition that the whole world heard God's words. And at that moment, there were, were tongues of fire that descended down. And at that moment, people were hearing other languages being spoken, but they understood it in their own. It's almost as if there was a healing beginning that was healing the brokenness that came with that separation of language, with that separation of culture, with that separation of not being able to understand one another deeply. A, a reconciliation from the Tower of Babel's separation with tongues of fire. And so you have tongues associated with the word words and fire that would have brought to mind the original Pentecost when God descended in fire. And so what you have in the book of Acts is a fulfillment of something that which was initiated at Sinai. God spoke and was in fire and gave his words to the people. And then in the book of Acts, when the sisters and brothers are together from around the world, collectively remembering that moment at Sinai, God descends as tongues of fire. And then they begin to understand one another, even though they are speaking different languages. And so what we must glean from this as followers and believers of Messiah Jesus is that Jesus Christ in his death, in his burial and resurrection brought that which was separated 
together. That which had been separated is reconciled in and through Christ. There is no more boundary between God and people because of Christ. And there is no more boundary between people and people because of Christ. When Jesus died, it's recorded in the Gospels that when he died, this, this curtain that was in the temple that was blocking people from going into this this holy of holies this room where the presence of god was believed to dwell when that curtain was ripped from top to bottom very symbolic that there was that there was a block between god and humanity and then god initiated the tearing away of that blocking and so what you have there is we see that the death of christ symbolizes and demonstrates that there is no separation between god and people anymore. And what is demonstrated in the book of Acts at the fulfillment of Pentecost, when the tongues of fire come and the Spirit of God is given to the people there, it demonstrates that even though that they're different from one another, even though that they live in different places and speak different languages and have different skin color, because of the active work of Christ and the giving of the Spirit to people, there is no separation between people and people. They do speak different languages, they do look different than one another, but they understand one another and they listen to one another because of the Spirit. And we see Paul writing to an early church in Ephesus that Christ himself is our peace that brings these divided people together in one. There used to be a wall that literally divided different people groups. There was a wall that divided Jewish people from non-Jewish people. There was a wall that divided men from women and In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, Paul reminds the the early church that Christ himself is our peace, gets rid of that wall so that what was two becomes one. So many times followers of Jesus have these, these circular conversations about what Jesus came to accomplish, right? What Paul says to this early church in Ephesus is that Christ's purpose was to make in himself one new humanity. The Almighty One unites us in and through Christ regardless of language, regardless of creed, regardless of skin color, regardless of borders or boundaries or similarities or differences, we are united in and through Christ. And what happened at Pentecost in the book of Acts is that God showed the world that he did not just send his words for humanity to try to interpret and understand, but that God sends the Spirit in order to be placed inside of us so that we can actually begin to understand the ways of God and the ways of one another. So can we pretend something for a moment? I thought it might be fun to hear some people that are part of the Heart Extended family that speak languages in addition to English. There are some people in our extended church family that speak a language other than English as their first language. There are some people in our uh, church family that speak an additional language fluently or semi-fluently or even are learning it in school and taking classes. Let's watch and listen to our sisters and brothers speaking different languages and allow the Almighty One to unite us in spirit. And they'll be reading our benediction. Our church family benediction is actually a blessing that comes from the book of Numbers chapter 6. And so I'll say that in a moment, and then we'll hear our sisters and brothers saying it together in another language. And can we pretend that we understand? (laughs) Can we we look at them and listen to them because of the work of Christ? All of those borders and boundaries have been removed. Even though we still have people around us that are different from one another, We can celebrate those differences and we can begin to understand one another in and through the Spirit. Today is Pentecost and it is time for the church around the world to demonstrate this unity in the Spirit in a way that cannot be demonstrated any other way. There are differences of people groups and those differences can be celebrated instead of feared. There are differences of languages, of skin color, of culture, and even creed. There are different ways of thinking of the world. There are different ways of talking about the world. There are different ways of thinking and speaking about how the world should be. There are different 
celebrations, there are different thoughts, there are different foods, there are different words, there are different understandings. And because of the work of Christ and because the giving of the Spirit, because God's Spirit was poured out to humanity and there was a fulfillment of this Pentecost day, it is not only based on words, but it is based on Spirit. So my sisters and my brothers, may you experience the unifying fire of the Almighty One. May it both terrify you and excite you to believe that the world can be united in Christ. May we be able to listen to one another and actually believe that because of the work of the Spirit of the Almighty One that we can begin to also understand one another. May the Lord bless you and keep you and shine his light on you, and be gracious to you, and turn his face towards you, and grant you with peace. May the Lord bless you, and keep you, shine his light on you, and be gracious to you, and turn his face towards you, and grant you with peace. May the Lord bless you, and keep you, shine his light on you, Be gracious to you, turn his face towards you, and grant you with peace. My sisters and my brothers, may the Lord bless you and keep you and shine his light on you and be gracious to you and turn his face towards you and grant you with peace. Benediction. Que l'Éternel te bénisse et te protège. Que l'Éternel te regarde avec bonté. Uiteka aghumujisha akurinde. Uwiteka akumuri chishirize muma sohe. El Señor haga resplandecer su sostro sobre ti y tenga de ti misericordia. El Señor te bendiga y te guarde. El Señor te mire con agrado y te extienda su amor. Yivareja ha Adonai vayish mareja. Yair Adonai panavaleja vihoneka. فليباركم الله ويحميكم يشرق الله بوجهه عليكم يلطف عليكم ولاغاسلوفيت بي غاسبوت ايسورا ليت بي دا ازراي تي بي غاسبوت جهوا تي بنديغا اي تي غارده جهوا هاغا ريسبلاندسر سو روسترو سوبري تي اي تينغا دي تي ميزيريكوريا سي بو سينيا بينينو سي بو بران سوينو سي بو سينيا فينو سانتي ليلا افيك نو Se por bien pitié pour nous. Jehová haga resplandecer su rostro sobre ti y tenga de ti misericordia. Je leur dirai que l'Éternel te bénisse et te protège, que l'Éternel te regarde avec bonté et qu'il te fasse grâce. Ibaraka arab wa harusuka. Yaqai arab bi wajha alayka wa rahumuka. يباركك الرب ويحرسك يدي الرب وجهه عليك ويرحمك كل تنال في سطوة يتقول لك ويتك أقرب نزا أقوام أبر أسي سبري تي سو نصر إتربس السنور تمسر سو فور إتي كنسدا لا باس أدنى بنفلخة في السيم لخا شلون وليندر الله إليكم إحنانه Jehová alce sobre ti su rostro y ponga en ti paz. Se pulbanu que pose. Y ponga en ti paz. Que el eterno ve sobre ti y te acorde la paz. Y me nahuca salam. Y el tafetur rabba wakihi ilaika. Y me nahuca salam.